Pump up the volume on your parenting with Parent Pump Radio. Get motivated, get inspired, and get informed with how to parent in the new millennium. Your hosts for the show and Parent Coach Super Guides are Gretchen Downey and Jacqueline T.D. Quinn. Welcome to Parent Pump Radio. You are on the air with Jacqueline T.D. Huynh and myself, Gretchen Downey, and we are talking today about why my kid hates school. So why do you think kids hate school, Jackie? Probably for the same reason I hated school. And what's that? (laughs) It's boring. It's not fun. It isn't fun. School now may be better. I mean, I don't know what it's like in the classroom, but I know when I was younger, I mean, everything was focused face front, everything's ahead, you can't look sideways, not to the back, and it was just about homework and homework and homework. And well, I don't think anything's changed, you know? And you're just listening to the teacher. It's like... It's like a lecture. When you're little, I think the younger grades, it's a lot more fun. It's more more creative. But as you get older, and and my kids are teenagers now, it is just pile on more work and more homework, right? And you know, the saddest thing about all of this is it has taken the fun and the joy out of learning. That is the worst thing that yeah. has, has resulted out of this. My kids right. say, don't teach me anything. I don't want to learn anything. It's just pure memorization. For me, that's all what it was. And I learned how to memorize short-term memory. Just memorize for the test and then cleanse it out. Right. Delete. Right. So the challenge I think that most parents are experiencing now is, especially as they get into these upper grades or even in middle, you know, just regular grade school, is that... Their children, their pressure is on to make the grades, to be the top dog in the class, to, you know, get whatever accolades they can get so that as they go into junior high or high school or even get accepted to high schools now, yeah. right, yeah. that the pressure is on at, at junior high level. And this is crazy. And we're taking this, again, we're taking this fun and this joy out of learning by just trying to cram a lot of information and become great test takers okay so this is this is the industry problem right now this is you know this is the whole issue with the tiger moms and everything else yeah that we've got going on i mean what do you see in your yeah absolutely since i come from an asian family it's it's always been a tiger mom it's really tiger parents and tiger (laughs) ancestry what what is it about that tell i mean i'm not asian but i i mean i get it because i work with plenty of people but i think for those that don't understand it Explain that. Education is everything in the Asian culture. It is... It is about honor. It's about prestige for the family. I mean, it is huge on the shoulder of the young generation, the you know, the younger kids. And I don't know where it came from. It's just a belief that that is a belief because you won't get ahead or you a won't get the job or there's su- too ma- there's too su- many people in a country that it's in order to get to the top yep. or to get the job you have to do this. Kind yes, of- it's about success and success to them is about making money and 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 looking good for the family, right? You want the doctors, the attorneys, the engineers. And so in order to be that, you have to have the education. So education is strongly almost like a dictatorship. It's in our DNA that you do it. And at what cost? Well, I can tell you that before my generation, you just did it. Now, though, with the 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 movement of being happy and knowing what you want, all this self-empowerment improvement... It's making the new generation crazy. Is it muddling things up a oh, bit? Oh, yes, it is. And you're, ta- you're talking about higher rates of suicide because there's so much pressure and just lots of arguing arguing, and, and pressure and stress with the parents of the old generation and the kids of the young gen- generation. Because like you said, this is the new millennium. They, they are reshaping they're taking what but, worked back then and what works now and coming together. They don't want to keep Are these it. kids still listening? I mean, I, I feel like, you know, in this culture, there's a lot of kids still listening to their parents in this regard. So, because I see them, you know, you hear it in school, yeah. you know, and I yeah. hear kids talking in school and it's yeah. like, you know, they're, 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 they're very focused and they're this and they're that. And so... Is that still happening? When, it, when is when's the point when they stop listening to this older generation's fear-based mentality about what success is or what they think it is, which isn't accurate anymore. No, it isn't. You know, and it's it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 48 right now. I woke up when I was probably 19 when I changed my major from bio 
to theater. Oh, shame on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was a big... Did you get the scarlet mark or something for uh, this? No, or what? I got the... Basically, my mom stopped talking to me. Oh, and, yeah. Like, just, they basically disowned me for a, for a good six months to a year. And they finally realized that goes to that saying where you either have to evolve and change or you die and if she didn't evolve and change she was not going to have kids right with her and so she was forced to do that and accept it and I think my for my family and and other families out there you realize that your kids are going to do it right once they're 20 25 like they're going to do it and the more you support them and just be there for them the more they will actually come to you and be there for you. But if you're just constantly oppressing them and telling them that's wrong, I just well, I just defied them. Well, and it's all you're you're one of the lucky ones because you know there are a lot of kids that go down that road, and this is a whole other radio show, but it's on the quarter timer syndrome or the quarter timer generation, and they're the ones that are coming out of the college that did the right thing or what their parents or what they thought they're supposed to do or what would make them money or what, you know, mm-hmm. they did all the test taking, they got all the good grades. And now they don't have any jobs yep. and they're miserable and, and they're with upset. college tuition as yeah. much as it is. And they didn't follow their heart. They yep. didn't follow what they really wanted or loved to do. And now they're miserable, kind of exponentially miserable. Absolutely. And they're becoming depressed. You know, I, I know kids that are getting on medication. They're not kids. They're young adults now yeah. getting on medication because they're, they don't know how to reg- handle the emotional aspects of this. And they've got the financial bill of having to pay the college education and not having a job when you get out of college now because the American dream didn't really happen and so there's a lot to talk about on that subject as well but I think you know let's get back to why do kids hate school yeah well the big reason is is because early on we know from some of the studies and such that kids their divergent thinking their creative thinking is really high when they're very young and with each year you add in school in Mm -hmm. elementary school and grade school when you go up to high school we actually decrease their their creative thinking and abilities, their their IQ and their intellectual and emotional intelligence. And that's because they move more into memorization and all these kinds of things. Right. Instead of training them to be really good at and learn things about subjects that they really love. Right. Because every human being, I mean, this this subject is very tied to human purpose, okay? Every human being is on this planet for a reason, for a very specific reason unique to them. That is not your parents designed for you. It is really unique to you, and it's up to you to find it, you know? And, And hopefully you have parents that help guide you to find that purpose, right? Yeah. What you're meant to do here, share, how you're meant to grow and all those kinds of things. And this isn't how our school should be filled with learning. Right. Right? Yeah. Around this subject. And it's not. We know we have a hundred year old antiquated education system and it's stressing our kids out. And so this is what has to change. And we're actually going to be talking about physiologically, because for those parents out there that really aren't totally bought into that this isn't bad for my kid or there's how is it bad or just wondering how what are we doing in this regards when we stress our kids out in this way what's happening well we're going to get into that so there will be no question about in your mind about what it's doing to your child now the only thing you have after that is to decide hey what am I going to do with this information? How am I going to support my child and, you know, their upward development or my own for that matter? How am I going to shift my thinking and doing? And I'd love for you to talk about how the brain works regarding this aspect, Gretchen, because I know you're really knowledgeable on that. Yep. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is key because this is what most parents don't know. And, and, and once you understand what's happening inside the human being, with the things that we do, the things that we think, the things that we learn, you will understand whether you're building that human being, whether it be your kid or yourself, upward or it's helping them to spiral downward, actually you know, yeah. degrading their, their human potential and their growth and their development. Because sometimes we dump so much information in education, but we actually are having opposing effects, okay? Yeah. I can't tell you how many kids I hear 
in school say, I'm just memorizing the test and I forget everything after I learn it. Just, I'm just right. doing it for the test. So there's, they don't feel there's a purpose to no, their learning. And who, no. who enjoys doing something? They we don't, don't care. know why. Everybody they, wants... They're doing it for a test. Right. To pass a test, they go, and then I forget it. Doesn't yeah. matter. So that is, I look at that and I'm like, that is wasted, wasted years of a kid's learning. And then on top of it, to have the kid come home and say, I don't want to learn anything. It's like, it's turning them off. When we are supposed to be lifelong learners, lifelong creators, that's what human beings are. And it's so much more fun when you know why you're learning something. Even if I have to go to an Ikea, to Ikea to buy a a something, and I'm having to put together, I know that the reason why I don't understand this instruction, (laughs) it's crazy, it's stupid to look at, the reason why I'm doing it is because I get this product. So at least it's more fun to do you it. You have some outcome or something like that. But it, who, it, or who, to have a purpose with it or something. Yeah. But here's what we're doing. And this is what I really want parents to know and understand. Every parent should really understand three aspects of the brain. The first is the amygdala. That is a little P-shaped thing on the very interior of the brain. And what it does is perceives threat. Okay. And so whenever someone is fear-based, stressed out, worried, anxious, we hear so many kids having anxiety problems and adults too, right? Yep. This is your amygdala firing. It used to be for lions and tigers and bears, but we don't have those anymore. So what do we do? We create something. And it can be drama cycles. It can be whatever, stress in school. But that amygdala is overworking in the human brain. And... The thing we need to understand is that it can't perceive what is real threat and what is not. It just fires like it is all threat. Okay. Like it's all a lion. Yeah. Okay. Do do, do you see what I'm saying? That's your, if that's your default. And then it sends cascading things into the body to stress out, to cell shut down, all sorts of things. Okay. When that cortisol and everything else is released. But the thing that it does in the brain in a metaphorical sense is it hijacks your highest thinking center electrically, it hijacks it, which is the prefrontal cortex. And that part of your brain, which is Is in the forehead, frontal forehead, is what you want to turn on. It's responsible for your creativity, your inspiration, your joy, love, passion, all the compassion, all these wonderful high emotions, and we are shutting it down. So we wonder why our kids aren't happy and having you know so much anxiety because we're actually shutting off the region of the brain that we really want to turn on for them to be the highest, most advanced creator beings that a human being can be, okay? And then the third aspect of the brain is the hippocampus, and it's also embedded kind of deep in there. But think of it like your hard drive and of a computer. It just stores information. So whenever you have a repetitive habit or pattern, mm-hmm. So if you're constantly stressing out or stressing your kid out or having anxiety thoughts, emotions, like you just keep practicing that, it just builds the neurocircuitry for you to react that way. So you don't learn to walk every day. You don't learn to talk every day. It just happens automatically. This is hippocampus work. Okay. You don't have to think about it. It just happens. Well, guess what? When you repeat patterns, that gets embedded in the hippocampus and now it becomes automatic autopilot. So now my autopilot now is to be stressed out, to be, have ridden with anxiety, ridden with fear. It could be anger. We can even have like joy, our higher emotions, you know, it works both ways. Right. So the question is, what are we activating? If we're activating that prefrontal cortex a lot, then our kids are more joyful. They're happier. And then this gets put in the hippocampus as automatic. Way cool. Our our kids love to be happy. I mean, we notice this on our cell phones. I mean, they they love watching funny videos of silly things of kids because they need happiness and levity. Right. They're actually trying to turn on that prefrontal cortex. Or even getting to the next level. I know there's these games that get to the next level. It gives them that excitement. Okay, I get to the next level. Well, that's level. dopamine. That's a different one. That's dopamine. That's a like that's like a different kind of rush that okay. can actually lead to addiction. Okay. That's a different one. But but the happiness what we're talking about here is we want to activate that. And and they're trying to get it different ways, but then everything else is shutting them down. We got parents yelling and getting kids, you know, getting on their case. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, can you just let up? There is not a high school student that I've ever talked to that says that my, my parents, like, God, I wish they'd just relax. That's <laughs> all they say, just relax. And yeah. and they're just trying to get you to shut your amygdala up. <laughs> you yeah. shut it off. 
and activate a little higher brain center within you because that prefrontal cortex is integrated. It's, it, it, it actually accesses the full brain. So your child ends up being resilient when challenges come their way. They can use all the brain to come to a decision about something and this is what you want. The amygdala doesn't give you that. The prefrontal cortex does. And this is where we want resiliency and thriving within our children. Mm -hmm. And we have to push it that direction. And so if there are parents out there, people listening, if there's ever a question about, is this good for my child or not, this should really shore it up for you and answer that for you. Anything that you're doing or your child is doing, what is it exercising? What are you activating within their brain? Right. Okay. Yeah. The science is out. I mean, this isn't me. If you don't believe me, go study all the science. It's and, all over Google. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is the word up. So yeah. what are you doing to your kid? And is it worth it? Is it worth their life? I read a statistic once. They were saying that when they ask people who are in their deathbed or towards their last days of their life, they said, what advice would you give to your younger self? And they said time and time again, they always say, I would tell my younger self to relax. Yes. Yes. To relax. I feel like we live in this state of being not relaxed, whatever that level is, that our body doesn't even know what relax means. Right. Right. And then we, we project that to our children and we expect they should be the same. And we think they're not doing anything. Well, of course. They're being lazy if they're not. And then what do they do in the meantime, too? They watch on TV all these drama shows. Yeah. That they will make a fight and an argument out of the silliest things, Especially right? Especially these reality shows. Oh, well, yeah. And what are they doing? They're activating the amygdala. You can watch them all on TV, get all reactive about right. something. You know, a guy sits down by a girl on a couch and they make a half hour show about how they want to fight about it. Because, so, you know what I mean? Right. And they the all. The Kardashian. Get, I mean, that's And they get all fight up and they're activating the amygdala. So, this is what is pervasive in yeah. our American culture today. And I'm sure it extends beyond right. American culture, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, but it's something we need to be conscious of. Okay, yeah. so this is a conscious parenting show and radio show. And we it we're stimulating you and challenging you to really think what are you activating? About what do you what want you're to doing? activate? Yeah, to observe yourself and your actions and your children, because we must teach our children to observe themselves so that they can regulate themselves instead of looking to something outside, whether it be a pill bottle or whatever, you right. know? So just to loop back to mm -hmm. the theme of our show is why my kid hates school. Yeah. How would you close that up? We are activating the wrong area of the brain. And the kids, they can't articulate it, but they know it. Something doesn't feel right about what we're doing and how we're teaching them. I'm not saying all schooling systems are bad because there's some right. fabulous, fabulous people out there Absolutely. and fabulous teachers. And I think people doing the best job they can with our school national school systems that are set up. Okay. Yeah. So I, I work with schools. I hats off to them. I think they're amazing. But we are activating the wrong area of the brain. We are stopping their inspiration and their creativity, which are the highest elements of human abilities. Okay, we're, we're cutting off their imagination, which probably could be a whole nother show. Yeah. And what is imagination? What do children do the best? They imagine, imagine and right. they play. And what's involved in that? Love, gratitude, creativity. Joy. Joy. They're just, they're, they're using all of their abilities and it makes learning and work fun. fun. This, this is their right. work. When right. they're doing this imagine play, it is work to them, but it's a great deal of fun. And, and that's how it's supposed to be. Work isn't supposed to be miserable, right? Right. It's not, neither is school, neither yeah. is learning. So those would be my, my parting words. Awesome. Well, thank you for tuning in to this show, Parent Pump Radio, and we look forward to having you come back. Thank you so much for joining us today on Parent Pump Radio. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday at noon Pacific Standard Time on missionradio.org to get our new episodes and also where you can subscribe to our Parent Pump Radio feed and listen to past shows. Also, you can visit us at our website, parentpumpradio.com, to leave your comments, questions, topic suggestions for future shows, and to connect with us on social media. When you sign up on our website, we have a free gift for you. So don't miss out. Until next time, have a wonderful week. <laughs>